Good day, ladies and gents. This is Sardo van Glennen, a.k.a. Mr. VG, and I am again excited to be here. I'm excited to have been on this journey with you as we've gone through so many different videos. We've looked at so many different past exam questions, looked at live streaming sessions, looked at theory, looked at a lot of awesome stuff. But today I'm specifically going to have a look at something that is very close to my heart exam preparation. I'm going to do two videos for you guys in this series. The first video is your exam preparation specifically for paper one. Because paper one and paper two we approach a little bit differently because the examiners on the other hand you know they ask different questions and also it's completely different papers, different topics, different everything. So in other words, we need to make sure that our approach for every single exam is spot on. So what I'm specifically going to have a look at today is how do I approach your maths paper one? So when I start looking at my preparation, I've got to understand. I've got to understand that there's six topics for me to choose from. Or not to choose from necessarily, but six topics that they could ask me and they're going to ask me. First of all is algebra and equations, which include inequalities. Now that is going to be about 25 marks out of the 150. Then secondly, there's going to be sequences and series. So, geometrical sequences, arithmetic, quadratic, as well as those infinite series. I'm separating them a little bit because they love those. Then there's going to be financial maths, which will be about 15 marks. Functions and graphs, 35 marks. Calculus, 35 marks. And then probabilities, 15 marks. That means that our two biggest, our two biggest topics are functions and graphs and calculus. Now functions and graphs and calculus kind of, you know, they intertwine, you know, they kind of go, you know, I can ask one inside the other one. So please, these two topics count basically half of your question paper. About 70 out of the 150. So I cannot stress how important it is. The next thing we are going to look at is, but what must I focus on when I prepare for this exam. My focus for maths paper one is a little is slightly different from paper two. In paper one, I'm going to specifically focus on strategy. In other words, I want to know if I need to do something like determine a maximum, I'm going to ask myself, how do I determine that? So I've got to get my strategy spot on. My strategy, for instance, for a maximum or a minimum is that you need to determine a derivative, put it equal to naught. But for me to get a derivative, I need a formula. For me to get a formula, I must only have one variable in it. So you see, it's about looking into the future, kind of getting that crystal ball out, you know, and saying, you know, what do I want in the future? And going back now and saying, okay, what do I need to do now to get there? So paper one, my focus is on strategy, making sure my tools and my techniques are in place. A very important thing about paper one is you will see that there's the same kind of questions coming every single year. And I'm going to talk about that quite a few times in this specific lesson or in this video. Because in this video, I'm going to talk a lot about the different kinds of questions. You know, what must I look out for? So I'm going to help you a little bit. The next thing I'm going to have a look at is specifically working with the three bands of learners that will be watching this video. The first band of learners I'm going to specifically have a look at are the guys that are getting 40% and below. In other words, those guys that's kind of going, 
you know, so I hope I'm going to pass mathematics. I must just do enough to pass mathematics. For you guys, what I have found a lot of times is the reason why we are getting low marks could be either, you know, you are just not mathematically strong. Or, there's a lot of times guys that work like super hard, but your approach is not good. Other people just, you know, when it comes to maths, they just stress out so much that they bomb out every test. So the important thing is you've got to get your strategy right. And if you've got your strategy right, you're going to ace this. So if you are a learner getting below 40%, your biggest, biggest thing is making sure you get your basics right. In other words, making sure you can factorize correctly, making sure you can solve equations, making sure you can do all those score marks that will be there in every single section, that you get it right. In other words, listen to what I just said. In every section of work, all six of those sections, there are score marks. There are questions that are there every time. Like in derivatives, in differential calculus, there's always going to be a first principle sum. There's always going to be a determined dy over dx. When I look at functions and graphs, there's always going to be x-intercepts, y-intercepts, turning points. There's always going to be determine the equation of a specific graph. When it comes to, fun to sequences and series, there's always going to be some quadratics. There's always going to be some sum to infinity. There's always going to be a sigma notation. I know some of these things are tough, but they're going to be there every time. So make sure you get those right. So focus on the score marks in every single section. You must make sure you use the right formulas at the right places. I've seen so many of my students losing countless marks because they don't get the right, use the right formula in the right place. Guys, I can barely give you one or two out of the five marks or four marks if you use the wrong formula, just a mark maybe for substitution. So if you are getting below 40, make sure your strategy, you know, where do I use which formula is 100% correct. Then I'm going to say something that a lot of you are not going to like. Some teachers are going to disagree with me, but slow and steady wins the race. In other words, do not just rush through an exam just for the sake of finishing the paper, just for the sake of getting 100% of the paper done and trying to do as much as possible because then you're in a hurry and then you're getting fast. No, I'm getting stressed because I'm not going to finish. And then you mess up even the score marks. Ladies and gents, you need to make sure that you get everything you write down is 100% right. It doesn't matter if you then do 100% of the paper and you don't focus on making it, doing everything right. Then you are going to make so many mistakes because you're just stressed because you've got to answer every single question. The last thing for the guys getting below 40, never leave a question open. I know that sometimes those level 4 questions, you've got no idea. I don't know how to do it. Fill in something. Write something down for the examiner to actually give you marks. Let's say they ask you determine the, surf, uh, the measurement so that the surface area is at a maximum and you go, Oh my goodness, I don't know where to start. Well, think about a minimum or a maximum. I've got to get a derivative and make it equal to zero. So write that down for the examiner. Write down the strategy. So you say DTSA over DX or DR, depending on what variable is used, equal to zero. 
you might even get one or two marks for that out of seven, even if you can't even calculate that surface area. Write down a strategy so that the examiner can give you marks. Now next, for the guys getting, you know, between 40, 50 and 80 percent, for you guys, we are starting to move into the level three type questions. You know, level two and level three type questions you need to be able to do. So for the guys getting, you know, below 80, but not in the region of below 40 where you're failing, specifically those guys, you know, I encourage you to make sure you look for patterns from previous exams. Look for even difficult questions, but questions you see repeating every single time. And this is very helpful, especially when you start looking at previous year's papers. We're going to talk about that a bit later on. Then, those guys getting your 60s and 70s. Level 4 questions can easily throw all the momentum out of your bus. As you're writing this exam, you hit the level 4 question in the middle. Five more question. Now you spend 20 minutes or 30 minutes because I've got to solve that. And then you get so blooming stressed out that you hit there and you know you've got to rush. Now you're not going to finish. And now and now and now and then you just bomb out for the rest. You start doubting yourself. Hey, I can't do this and I'm stupid. And I... No, please stop yourself at that moment. Stop. Leave those level four questions for right at the end. Now, what are level four questions? It's not about difficulty level. It's about never being seen before. So it's those, what the hell are they asking me kind of questions. Leave them for last. Then, when you've gone and make sure that you didn't make mistakes, you've got your basics right, you've done the, you know, the seen but difficult questions, then you go over to those questions. Then you answer those level four what the hell kind of questions. But please, if you leave a question, say 10.2, in the middle of a question paper open, write on your exam for the examiner. They need to check that one is found later on. You know, it would be even better if you say, look for this on page this, or look for this at the end of the exam, because that's going to help your examiner to get where your question is. Our last band of learners that I'm going to talk to is those guys that are getting 80s and above. In other words, your A candidate students. I'm also talking to those guys that are getting like 77, 78. You know, you're almost by the 80. You can almost smell it. When we talk about, when I'm going to talk about you, I've got a very different approach. Because you cannot spend too much time on the easier questions. So my little bit of advice to you is, first of all, make sure everything you write down is 100% correct. But be careful of spending too much time on a question. In other words, if a question is three marks, try and finish it in three minutes or less. Especially an easy question. But eliminate the unnecessary mistakes. Do not please just rush through for the sake of rushing through, but do leave enough time for those level four questions at the end of your exam. When you practice, I encourage you to find more than one method of solving a question. Because yes, it's maybe not the one you see first, but maybe a second or third method you find 
maybe, just maybe, that method you need in the exam for a different level 4 question. But again, do not just focus on level 4 questions when you prepare, because then you might make silly mistakes with the easier or the level 1, 2, and 3 questions. Whether you're in a GDE school or in an IEB school, do both types of papers when you prepare. Because more and more and more of the GDE, even Sakai, are asking questions similar to what the IEB have been asking for many years where they mix things up and they throw things from the left field at you that you never saw coming and they don't scaffold them anymore at least one or two maybe three of them they don't scaffold them seven marks wham bam thank you ma'am you've got to answer that so please those 80 and above percenters make sure that you practice both types of exam papers gde ieb Make sure you practice them. Because what I have found is that the IEB paper ones are sometimes for me a lot more tricky than the GDE paper ones. But the GDE paper twos are sometimes more difficult for me than the IEB paper twos because the maths that they require they sometimes are sometimes rigorous. Sometimes it's tough to get to that maths, so be able to do both. Next up, as part of this preparing for the exam, I'm going to look at what do I need to look out for in the different topics. First of all, in algebra and equations. Please look out for certs and exponential simplification. Also look out for when is something undefined. That is when something is divided by zero. Or when you're working with logarithms, that number inside the log as well as the base have to be bigger than zero. Those are little small theory that you need to know. For financial mathematics, there are two things that you need to look out for. First of all, using the right formula at the right time. The moment you use the wrong formula at the wrong place, guys, there's maybe one mark for you. Even if you get in all the substitute and, and all the manipulation right, it doesn't matter. Wrong formula, sorry, one mark for subbing in, if you're lucky. So make sure you have the right formula for the right situation. Also, look out for nominal to effective the converting of the interest rates. The reason for that one saying it is because they don't give you the formula. Please make sure that you've got that formula down. For sequences and series, you need to look out for combined patterns. In other words, where the odd number placements, for instance, is an arithmetic sequence, while the odd number placements is a geometric sequence. There you've got to split it up into the two different combined patterns, or the two different separate patterns, I mean. When we talk about for calculus, in calculus specifically, Something you need to look out for is prisms, the surface area formulas and the volume formulas. Those won't be given to you. So cylinders, cubes, rectangular prisms, triangular prisms, sometimes won't be given to you. So you've got to go and study them. Pyramids, cones, spheres, they'll usually give to you the formulas, but not necessarily. So please make sure that you know those formulas. Hey, and formulas, if you know them well, let me just say, you look super smart and feel great when you can write down that formula 
and you don't even have to look on the formula sheet or you don't have to look on the information given. You can just quickly jot, jot it down. It just feels amazing. When I talk about probability, two things stand out for me. Tree diagrams, when two events follow on one another, those are quite tricky, as well as independence and mutually exclusive events. If you are a bit unsure about what I'm talking about at this moment, please go and watch the videos on probability. I go through these in detail in those videos. With functions and graphs, what you need to look out for is the little theory points that gets thrown in. Things like axes of symmetry, things like transformations. What does, you know, the different A's and B's and P's and Q's, what do they do in a formula? What is the effect they have on a specific formula? Go and study those. Our last leg of this specific video, hang in there, I'm almost done, I promise you that. Last thing is what is the strategy for my approach when I prepare for paper one? My strategy for the approach is very, very simple, but it's a lot of work. First of all, you need to have all of your formulas and where they are applied written down. So summarize them. I would take every section and divide every section up. So equations and inequalities, what formulas do I use there? Then I would look at finances. What formulas do I have there and where do I apply them? And so you go through every single one of the topics and you make sure that you've got the formula and where they are applied. As well, write down the strategies. How do I solve X? Or how do I determine a minimum or maximum? You know, how do I work with sigma notations? So those strategies, write them down per topic. But remember that we're not going to necessarily keep them per topic. We can mix and match topics. I mean, nothing prevents the examiner from asking sequences and series inside graphs. Nothing keeps them from that. So be careful that you have to think about what I like to call cross-pollination. I can ask you any strategy in any topic, but please... You've got to have them nicely written down. Talking about theory, you need to study all the different graphs, all five or six different graphs. So in other words, straight lines, exponential, hyperbola, parabolas, logarithmic graphs, as well as cubic graphs. You've got to know their formulas of per hearts. How do I determine the equations? You know, what makes them special? What special theory things are there, like axes of symmetry? Or um, maybe it's got different standard formulas, like the parabola. You know, maybe there's restrictions. You need to know that off by heart. Then, after you've summarized this, look for questions that occur in every single paper, you know, or in at least four, five, six papers directly after each other. Get that pattern and understand that we only have a set number of types of questions we can ask. So we're not going to ask like the whole paper insight. There's no way. At least 80 to 85% of a question paper you would have seen before, either in a previous year's exam paper or in your textbook. So please 
understand that there's going to be a lot of repetition, especially in paper one. Then, practice, practice, practice. Mr. or Dr. Pietrus Lombard, he always said, you know, he's got a principle, and I love this principle. If you can practice six hours a day for six days a week, that's 36 hours in a week, you will achieve success. I love that strategy. I love it because you are going to master the types of questions that they ask. Ladies and gents, I'm going to finish off this video by telling you, you can do this. I don't expect everyone to get a distinction. No. But make sure you get the marks that you can get. Make sure you score the marks that you can score. Make sure that you achieve your potential. And the best way to do that is to work smart. Not just to work hard, but to work smart. To not just run into this, but to have your strategies down to a T. Ladies and gents, this is Sara van Grenen, a.k.a. Mr. VG. I'm excited to see the results that's going to come out of these videos. Please, do not give up. You are almost there. You've got three or four months left. Then you're done with school. Make sure you get the marks that you can. You must have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day. Go and be awesome. Cheers.